Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary, and I'm a graphic designer and illustrator living in Canada. By day, I work at a paleontology museum doing graphic design and scientific illustration, and by night, um, aside from playing video games and bird watching, I am an illustrator for magazines and here on YouTube. I've decided that it's about time I did an in-depth, multi-part tutorial for you guys. So I've decided to start with how to draw and paint birds. It's hard to pick an animal group that I love most, very, very hard, but I have the most resources for birds, um, be it other artists' bird drawing materials or actual natural history specimens of birds. Um, I have a couple of taxidermy birds, I have multiple bird skulls, wings, feathers, and whole bird specimens. So I'm going to teach you what I know. I'm not an ornithologist, um, I'm just an artist, so some of my explanations may only scrape the surface. However, I hope that this series will help you become more comfortable with drawing birds since you'll then know sort of all the working parts that make up a bird. The logical place to start whenever you're drawing an animal is with the skeleton and the skull, but I decided to start a little more um, superficial and start with the feathers of the face. This is a part of birds that's very important in conveying their personality, their intelligence, um, their demeanor, and I really love drawing the feathers of the face and sometimes it's difficult to tell where the feathers are because they blend together. Um, so I'm going to show you what the facial feathers are for birds and then point out some examples on species where it's easy to tell where the breaks are and species where it's not easy to tell. So by the end of this you should know the names of the facial feathers, where they are, and how to use them in your artwork. The next um, film I would like to do for this series is going to be the skull. And then from there, we'll move on to the skeleton and the rest of the body. The wings will probably be much later on in the series. Sorry to disappoint you, but wings are incredibly complex and I want to make sure I do a good thorough job. So without further ado, I've got a drawing here that I've done of a northern flicker. A northern flicker is a type of woodpecker and their facial feathers are very pronounced, um, especially because they have a big red mustachial marking that uh, appears on the face. So it's really easy to tell where the breakups are on a flicker's face, which makes them a really nice model for this color-coded portrait that I'm gonna do. So I'll talk you through the feathers as I color code them. And then this image will also be scanned and available just on my Instagram. If you wanna take a screenshot of it, wanna follow me on Instagram, that'd be awesome. Um, I don't have a Patreon, YouTube is not my living. I make my living at my full-time job at the museum. So I don't mind sharing my resources with you guys for free. I've learned from a lot of different artists. Some of them I've paid lots and lots of money to take their courses and they were incredibly invaluable um, and definitely more in depth than I'm going to go, but hopefully this will be helpful anyway. So I'm just going to start and fill in the beak and the eye. Um, Obviously the beak and the eye don't have feathers on them. These are <laughs> structures where you're going to be feather free. Beaks come in so many different shapes, sizes, functions, um, you know, finishes. Some birds have really, really um, sort of grungy looking beaks like penguins do. Um, some penguins anyway, and then some penguins have smooth beaks. Um, the northern flicker has a very keratinous um, beak that's used for drilling holes. So it's a very strong beak. It's very firmly attached to its skull. And uh, the first little patch of feathers I'm gonna talk about here are the lores. The lores Let's see, what color do we want to make those? Let's do a nice green. The lores are right here in front of the eye. 
and sometimes this area on a bird is mostly skin and the lores are very thin and sparse. Um, sometimes the lores are hair-like or long or might even look like, like whiskers. So that's just this little section here. In front of the eye, leading up to the top of the beak. Now, going above that, we have the supercilium, or basically the, the eyebrow. That one goes over top of the eye and sort of leads back in a nice little, a nice little wing. Perhaps like a, a cat eye you would do with makeup, or um, sort of an old man's grand bushy eyebrow. But they generally follow this shape, and I like to use these in my art to help define a bird's um, where they're looking, um, what their expression is. Uh, if you're adding a little more anthropomorphization to your birds, you can use this as an expressive eyebrow even. Um, but it's going to frame the eye really nicely, and a lot of birds also get special markings on these feathers. So they'll have, for example, a white sort of eyebrow or something like that. A lot of the markings that birds have will follow the pattern of the facial features um, and the facial feathers, so that helps inform creature design as well. If you're making bird creatures, not necessarily based on real birds, knowing where the feathers should be going will help make believable facial patterning. Moving up a little more, we're getting to the crown. The crown is like a little hat, and it behaves quite like a hat, and uh, often birds that are named with the word crown in it, um, these are the feathers that are, are becoming uh, defined and, and different colored or something like that. So like a ruby-crowned kinglet has red crown feathers. Pretty, pretty straightforward like that. Now, obviously, this little bird here I'm painting is not the colors of an actual northern flicker. I am color coding these to the, the feather patterns. So that's the crown, and these feathers are often quite expressive. They can lift and lie flat. Um, blue jays, for example, have really expressive crown feathers, and they'll pop their hat up um, to communicate with other blue jays or lay it back down, um, and it's awful cute. Some birds, like herons, will have extended crown feathers that come out from the back like uh, little ribbons. One of my absolute favorite feathers on a bird are the auriculars. And I will make these a slightly darker green, I think. The auriculars on a bird are sort of like the cheek feathers. And that's what gives birds sort of their cute, chubby, fluffy cheeks. They're a blast to draw and paint, um, and they really help give dimension to the bird's face. So back here, um, on the back edge of the auriculars, uh, they're called auriculars because they cover the ear or the oral opening. Um, oral as an A-U, not O-R. So they cover the, the ear hole of the bird back here and they form the, the shape of the cheek. And these can be so puffy, so adorable, so cute. So if you ever ask me what's my favorite feather group on a bird, definitely auriculars. Now, one thing to note is that between the auriculars, the supercilium, and the crown, there's this line coming back from the eye, and that's going to be the biggest landmark for drawing the facial feathers of a bird. That's going to appear on pretty much every bird, no matter how floofy, how black, um, how dark, how indistinct a bird is. You're going to see this line which is a part in the feathers, coming back all the way from the eye to about um, here, right past the ear. 
So that's, a, that's an important landmark to know when you're drawing birds. Um, you can sort of fudge the rest of it, but if you get that little like nice part in the feathers coming back from the corner of the eye, you're golden, you're good. Now, going on to the bottom here, I'm going to move into the Malar feathers, um, which sort of, they come down from the, the, the lower jaw of the bird. They start here and sort of, they come back this way. So these feathers will often creep forward on, on the bottom jaw. They'll, they'll scooch up this way. Um, and they start very sparse and coarse up here uh, and, and eventually blend quite well into the nape feathers. So these are the Malar feathers. On the northern flicker, these are red. This is like a big red mustache. So in a real northern flicker, I'll include the photograph um, that I took right here. You can see that they're red. They're really red. They're really obvious. There's no doubt where the Malar feathers are on this species of bird. All right, and back here we have the nape, which is sort of like the back of your hair or, or something. These are the neck feathers. They cover the back of the bird's neck and they flow down into the mantle feathers and the breast feathers. I'm not going to be including the mantle or the breast feathers on this diagram. That will show up in a future video. But the nape feathers are often quite smooth and shiny and long. All of the feathers of the face on birds are typically quite thin. Um, they look like hair or tiny filaments more than feathers. Um, but the reason they're broken up into different feather groups is because they have different structures when you look at them closely and they perform different functions. So it's really handy for artists to, and for scientists, of course, <laughs> for artists and ornithologists to have these different names to refer to what they're working on because rather than saying, oh, you know, those feathers on the cheek that cover the ear. Well, we've got a name for that. Those are the auriculars. It creates a shorthand that helps you create more informed artwork and provide feedback on artwork as well. I'm just trying to get a nice wash here. I kind of overdid it. This ultramarine rose is very strong. And the final set of feathers, here are the throat feathers. That's fairly self-explanatory. They cover the throat of the bird and they start on the bottom of the lower jaw or the mandible. They flow along with the malar feathers and go down and join up with the breast feathers on the front of the bird's chest. Now, when I get into the rest of the bird feathers on the rest of its body, I will absolutely show you guys how these feathers play and work with the feathers of the body. But this diagram, we're gonna leave here for now. And one of the best ways to learn, I find, is to draw along with the diagrams. Copy the diagrams, label them. The more you label things, the better these words are going to stick in your head. So I'm going to show you some examples here of the facial feathers on my taxidermy birds and on some more of my personal photographs from bird watching. All right, so here is one of my taxidermy birds. This is a European starling that I got from a taxidermist in Russia, uh, Maria Reznikova. And you can see here that the bird has the lores in this front area and they're a little bit brownish and thin. Um, it has the nice shiny crown over here. And you can see that 
distinct part I was talking about above the auriculars. Now this is a very dark bird, very dark and glossy and shiny, um, but you can see this part quite clearly. Um, you have starting here, coming down, the malar feathers, and starting here, coming down, the throat feathers. And I'll just show you this other side too. The throat feathers on a European starling are used especially in communication. When these birds are doing their songs, they're going to fluff these pointy throat feathers out while they're singing, and ravens do this too. They get a big bulge of feathers beneath their bill. And this bird here is a Hungarian partridge or gray partridge um, by the same taxidermist. And you can see the big, poofy, fluffy, adorable auriculars right here, and that landmark part between the auriculars, the crown, and the supercilium. Um, you can also see the nares here, um, that's the nostril, and behind that the lores, which are very um, short, very, very short and fluffy. The throat feathers are a bit longer, and the malar feathers start here and go down this way. And here are a few more photographs from my collection where I have drawn some of the landmark facial feathers onto them. So you can pause this video if you need to take a closer look, but this will help you see how the facial feathers appear on different species. On some types of birds, especially owls, things get a little more complex, but it's still going to be approximately the same groups of feathers there. I hope this video has helped you, and I hope you subscribe to my channel and keep an eye out for the next video in this series, How to Draw and Paint Birds, which is going to focus on the skull of birds and probably their relatives, dinosaurs, too. Have a great day, and thank you so much for watching.